You're probably wondering how I'm up here falling to my death and with a smile on my face. Well, the story starts right by here. It's a normal day at the office for the Kerbal Space Program. We're testing out some planes, obviously explosions ensues, and we bail out at the last minute. Suffice to say, this is just an average day, you know, a few uh, broken ribs, black eyes, but uh, working with a smile on my face, what can you complain about? And then we find out what all the testing was about. It was to design a new plane that could take off at low speeds but still be quite compact. This is why we had the bi jet, not bi plane, but bi jet. And this was made so that it could take off at low speeds. I think it was about 40, 40, let's see. Yeah, about 46 meters per second, and then it could take off. And then we, well, this is going to go to lathe. Obviously, that's what the title of the video is about. I love this design, it's got very aerodynamic, it's got good control. A few more tweaks to the design, I think we could get this to lathe and be pretty good for the little mission I've got planned for it. Just, I think we need to make a few tweaks on the actual pilot we're going to take with us though. Well, with some of the minor problems in mind, go back to the VAB and start redesigning the setup for this biplane. First off, I think, let's make this design look awesome by sandwiching the end tip of the wings together and making it look awesome. Uh, except I think against this because this brings up some problems, I think, in the design. I'm sure I tried this before. And I'm sure there's a way around the problems that I had. However, I decided let's make this more stable by putting the wings on the end of the tip of the wings and then have the wings angled up slightly. Yeah, well, that'll work, because why not? Although I think you probably can see what the problems we have here is. Yes, those little wings that I've got on the side are going to create drag. Although it's not that much drag, and I think we probably get away with it, I think I would have to go against that and redesign it, because, yeah, it's... Lathe has a few problems in that there's very few islands, so then getting between each island, you need some way of well just traveling between them and tr I think we may have to uh, not use the autopilot too much because it's it doesn't work great if you can set some waypoints for it and set, use an autopilot for that I think we could but the way this is working I don't think so so the new redesign you can see that we put the separators for the wings straight on so they don't cause drag however they do add a little extra stability and oh yeah, we must add a ladder. What I'm going to do with this plane is we're going to fly over lathe, set some explosions and then measure the vibrations of the explosions to see what the planet is made of. And... Well, yeah, that's it. I've got nothing else planned for it. However, there is one more test we need to do for this plane. The plane is in here in the fairing. Now, I had the idea of these fairings are quite tough. They use for getting things into orbit, so they protect the craft. How good is it at protecting craft from re-entry heating? Now I think I can already hear some of you screaming at me because you already know the problems with this, but I haven't done a proper test on this before. And oh yeah, for some reason I forgot to add stretch to this rocket. This seems to be a recurring theme where I don't strut my rockets after I save them, or, you know, I don't strut them, save it, and perhaps I strut them later and forget that I didn't save it with the struts. Ah, crazy! Anyway, let's try and re-enter this. This is just from a normal opting speed spurt to kilometers per second. I do wonder if this test will be much more successful if I start rotating it. As you can see, I do it sort of slightly, but I decide to stop, and yeah, I lose control because I didn't have anything to generate electricity. And that's why I'm using the cheat by here. There's nothing else other than testing. Okay, we've got a bit of a heating and... Yeah. Ah, balls. <laughs> well, it was worth a go. If you do not... Uh, con if you do not... 
bloody hell, I'm trying to search for something to say, that something awesome and brainy to say so that uh, you have to do some testing, you have to put your hand in the fire to test to see if the flames are hot. But I, I think that's a bad analogy and uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, the next thing we're testing here is the ascension stage. Basically, once the kerbals are on the surface of the lathe, they need some way of getting up. At the moment, we've got a uh, four crew cabin and a three Kerbal command capsule, so that's a total of seven Kerbals we can take on this mission in total. However, the problems of first off are staging. Yeah, those jet engines are supposed to stage after the rocket engines boosters. But uh, also, we have the problem of when do we release those rocket engine, uh, the jet engines for ascent. Uh, because if no of you guys know, the lathe, which is a moon of jewel, also has an oxygen atmosphere, so that means jet engines will work. Right, redesign this. I've decided to put one fuel tank for the jet engines. This seems to save a lot of weight, and we still have a ton of Delta V. And after releasing all the rocket boosters, wait until the thrust to weight ratio just goes under one and then release the jet engines. I think we've got it down to the T now, because as soon as we get ourselves into orbit, we have almost one kilometer of delta V remaining. Well, okay, it's 722 meters per second, but that's enough for you to go and rendezvous with another craft that's in orbit, and then return yourself safely to Kerbin. Okay, oh yeah, and one thing, uh, pr you probably noticed that everything's nice and shiny and made of metal. No, it's not because my painters are on strike, it's because I've added an extra mod, which I forgot, the ultimate texture replacer. But as you can see, you saw the reflection of Kerbin in the R RCS tank. That is bloody awesome, I enjoy this mod. Although it causes some graphical glitches here and there, especially around the KLC, I think it works great. Anyway, back to the testing. How are we going to deorbit this when we get it to lathe? First thing I thought of was inflatable heat shield. We needed some little heat shields around these sides to protect the jet engines. But as you can see, this has always happened, especially with the inflatable heat shields. We keep on listing to one side or the other. Rotational craft sometimes helps, but as my experience with uh, trying to deorbit something huge, and I mean huge, base size thing, using nothing but those inflatable heat shields on EVE, and I think I also done one on lathe. Most of the things explode because every or the stress that's caused the these heat shields want to flip out because they're inflated, you have to keep on course. And oh yeah, I forgot, this, this test did work. Although I do admit I forgot the parachutes. Yeah, whenever you've got an inflatable heat shield, make sure the par you've got parachutes and they're fully open before you jet in the heat shield. But let's see if we can save this mission. Who have we got on here anyway? Bob, Joshua, and Akrof. Ooh. And... Okay. <laughs> so they died in the name of science. Let's try this again with the rotation. And I think I parachutes here. No, see, yeah, you can see this flips out of control. So the first test might have been a fluke, or might be more on the center. So I decided let's do it all heat shields. And see, we've got a good configuration of heat shields just to cover the surface area. We're still listing, and this way and that way. I'm not sure what's causing it. And I'm not sure if that time warping caused those to explode. But anyway, what if we add wings? If any of you have ex any experience with space planes, then you know uh, space planes don't normally explode, and they seem to made, be made of this tougher stuff. Well, as rockets, they are paper thin and explode when you blow on them. Literally. So, what I've done here, I've angled the heat shields to sort of try to keep us center and then winglets to keep us controlled and these seem to work coupled with the drogue shoots to make sure it slow us down quicker and so we don't flip out and then large parachutes then once they're open jettison the heat shields with the clever jettisoning uh, techniques and hey presto we survived now it looks like we need to use rockets to slow our descent Either that or I'll add more parachutes. I'll probably add more parachutes when it comes to taking this to lathe. 
But yeah, using the rockets seemed to do the trick because we want to make sure we have enough Delta V when we get into orbit that we can have rendezvous with the craft. Oh yes, and again, add some ladders, bloody hell. Where are the engineers when you need them? Okay, my piece to resistance. You may have seen a video of this before. This is called my spider rover. It was inspired by me by a spider of some kind. I can't remember what made me want to build this. Now, the original one was better because it used the rounder wheels and I used the tweak scale mod to make the wheels bigger, but I haven't got the tweak scale mod on here, so I've had to use the largest wheels, which don't look ridiculous on my craft. But as you can see, we are using jet engine to get around. This makes sure that we can get at a high speed. And if I do a, well, a power slide, you can see we're not flipping over like most of the craft in KSP. And also, the addition to this craft is, yes, it goes into water. And guess what? It works in the water as well. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't go that fast, and I think using the tweak scale mod on the wheels made it float higher above the water and go faster. But hey, we haven't got the tweak scale mod. I'd want to install it because well, I didn't want to install it. <laughs> I've got no excuse or reason. But hey, presto! If we use hyper edit, uh, no, not hyper edit, hyper warp then it looks like it is going really fast. And also I added extra tanks, that means we get about two hours worth of uh, Delta V thrusting on this. I'm not sure how far we'll get, will it get between the chain islands? But this is the hardest part, probably the hardest thing I have to do in this mission or lathe or bust. That is deorbiting the spider rover. Now I have to say the method for deorbiting this looks a bit ridiculous and it uh, probably won't stand up if I actually use this because you see we got the heat shields inflatable heat shields all around it I thought let's make a ball or something will this work um it does seem to work actually <laughs> the only problem is things explode as soon as we try to separate everything I'm not sure if we're exploded it must be important because my experience in KSP is so that you want explodes uh, when you don't want it to. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And also I'll have to add more parachute because yeah, my jet engines explode if I land in the water. Okay, so these are the craft that I am taking. I'll probably have to add a transfer craft for my laser bust mission. But let me know how, what else can I do? Is there something else I can add to my designs? Or, uh, I don't know, just give me some ideas. Also, I will be accepting any Kerbal names for this mission. All you have to do is write Kerbal and the name you want me to use. Make sure you write spell Kerbal correctly because that's how I default the search. Anyway, I am Orator, the engineering, I mean the engineer of lathe spacecraft or best. <laughs>